Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City is directed by Johannes Roberts and stars Kaya Scadelario. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. Hannah John Kamen, Robbie Amell, Tom Hooper, among others. And in this story, it takes place in 1998, set in the outskirts of Raccoon City, where a team of uh, special police officers are sent in to investigate something that happens at this mansion. At the same time, there's also some events that are going on in the Raccoon City area where, well, if you see from the trailers, essentially zombies are around the, trying to re, or wreaking havoc, and it's up to a group of survivors in order to try to survive. Now, here's a little backstory. Now, this movie was directed by Johannes Roberts, who previously directed um, a couple of movies I, that I, a movie I previously watched, which was 47 Meters Down, Uncaged. And he, I also heard that he directed uh, the second per, um, Strangers film, Pray at Night. Um, I remember being not too big on the first on uh, 47 meters down, but I thought the second one was decent. Um, this is also based on the series of video games of the same name and is a reboot of the live action film franchise that originally had uh, Mila Jovovich in the role of the rest of the movies. And I've been an avid fan of the games growing up, and uh, for many years I've always, you know, enjoyed the games as they went along and I've always tried to be up to date with all of them um, except for the last two, the last like main entries and so Resident Evil was always one of those series that got me into the whole zombie craze when I first played the original games and when the first film came out in 2002, Mio Jovovich, I gotta admit that even to this day looking back on it I still found it to be a pretty fun action film that just happened to be based on Resident Evil and I realized that over the years that that series has been straight so far from the games, but I kind of look at those movies as kind of their own thing and just happen to be based off Resident Evil, and I still enjoy them as like fun action movies for the most part. The only ones I didn't care for in that in those movies were Afterlife and the piece of shit we had a few years ago, which was the final chapter. And so when I heard that they were actually going to be doing a reboot while the last movie came, when the when the last movie actually came out. I actually was really interested in see what they could do with it since the series actually really deserved a reboot in trying to stay more closer to the games. And after the last, uh, going into it, I kind of went into a very low expectations because I kind of figured it was going to be doing kind of its own thing with, with trying to be on a movie standpoint while also trying to remain closer to the games than what the other films had. And I got to admit that my expectations were kind of lower than expected because when I heard that they were doing some different casting decisions and also doing things they changed from the games and trying to like uh, do certain things to kind of cram into a lot of the stuff from the first two games, it made me kind of really wonder where it was going to go, whether it was going to turn out good or bad. And so after upon seeing the film, I can say that while I did think that it was a decent movie, I, and it is a, it is definitely um, closer to the games than the other films are. I will say that it's it could have been a lot more better than I, than what it was going for. And so I was actually kind of because I actually went into it very just low expectations, but came out of it a lot a little better than expected. But it's still a very it's still pretty flawed in in, in some areas. Um, <laughs> But to get my pros out of the way, I will say that for the most part, the cast did fine. Um, I think the ones that stood out for me the best were actually uh, uh, the, the the girl that plays uh, that plays Claire, uh, K.S. Scadelario. Um, I'm not really too familiar with her, other than I remember her from the last uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movie that came out, and she, I thought she was really great as Claire. I thought she, you know, held her own, and she was definitely one of the ones that stood out for me the best as far as the performance wise. Um, her and also the guy that plays uh, that plays Chris Redfield, uh, Robbie um, Robbie Mel, who's I found out that he's actually the brother of uh, Stephen O'Mel, who plays off of uh, Arrow, and so my uh, or he's or he's actually the cousin of Stephen O'Mel. My bad. And so I thought he was great, and I thought that as far as like the way that they looked from the games, and for the most part, I thought Chris actually had it really. The guy who played Chris, I thought really did good, and he had it down as far as identical to what he had looked like in the games. And for the most part, uh, the girl that plays Clara, she does look like her with the kind of the jacket, but the only thing she's really lacking is the ponytail. Um, but I thought them two really suffered me the best as far as, you know, kind of being close to the games as far as personalities and, and you know, the way the story tells it and everything. And the rest of the cast I thought were fine, but the, the including the guy, uh, Donald, Donald Logue, who I've seen in a lot of movies, including Blade and... Uh, He's best known for uh, Gotham, where he played Harvey Bullock. 
it made me really kind of wonder if he, it, it almost made me think it's the alternate universe where Harvey Bullock became the chief of police in this. Like, he just, he had some really f fun moments that I thought really kind of made me, like, had me cracking up a little bit, and he was just a joy to watch if, in some parts. Um, and then the biggest ones that I, the biggest other praise I'll, I'll get to the most is I love the atmosphere they set it this time with, where it did start to remind me a little bit of the games of the first two original games. And from what I heard was that, well, at least, correct me if I'm wrong, but if what I'm hearing was that they were going more closer to the first, the, the, the first and second game's remakes that came out later, because they also used some characters that were from the the 2002 remake of, of Resident Evil that was originally on the GameCube. And so I think that was more that they were going for instead of the original games themselves, but they use pretty much the same, almost the same plot from the original games anyway. But anyway, that being said, the way that they set them in both the mansion and the city is the actual production design they used for actually going in the Raccoon City area and when we get to the mansion and a lot of the the different areas that are familiar with the games uh, had me really, uh, really in awe of it and it really looked very spot on. And one of the other things I got to appreciate the most is I actually really like the score in this. It has a very kind of like a weird kind of like haunting childlike kind of uh, score to it that I think really... I think it was really went with the mood with the movie. And one of the other things I got to admit too is that I enjoy the fact that, that for the most part, they actually did stick to practical effects in a lot of the parts, especially when you see what the zombies look like. And there are a couple of like other beings that they bring up with uh, that actually use pretty good practical effects for the most part. And so I got to give them props for that. And I also got to really appreciate that the movie was trying to build on some things that was very, you know, that, that was from the games I enjoyed, but that's kind of also where I get into some of my cons later. Um, because uh, I will say that going into my cons now, that the biggest issue I had the most is the writing and a lot of the changes they made from the games that I remember, and also the direction itself, the way it's structured. Because the first about, like the first act itself is all setting up to actually get to the actual stuff from the games and everything, and but the problem I feel like is that it feels like it either glosses over things too quick, or it's not, or it takes its time to really try to build up and not really spend a whole lot of time on things, and that really kind of messes with the pacing of the movie because it feels to me that they probably, if this would have been made maybe as a Netflix TV series or, or maybe even better as a mini series possibly, we we could have got some more time to build up more of that and have like each season like be the each of the games like the first season be Resident Evil 1 second season Resident Evil 2 or if they really wanted to go more with the game with the, at least the first game they could have actually did with that with doing it as just one movie again and and actually go with what they because it would actually go with what George Romero wanted to do when he uh, may rest in peace when he was still alive and he wanted to do the first movie from 2002 was he was actually going to follow the games like it was but I guess that maybe that is probably a good thing, though, because I get that they don't want to go too verbatim from the games. But at the same time, it, it feels like it's inconsistent at times because it's like they're trying to follow the games, then they're changing stuff to where it's not really um, focused too much with. And then you also have characters that are in the movie that are from the games, but they also change some of their personalities. Like, for example, the biggest issues I have in this one as far as the writing or the character development itself because while we get personalities of who the characters are there's really no like arc that a lot of the characters really go through other than the closest one I can think of is really Claire and, and maybe Chris but the rest of them they just kind of stand out to where like they have somewhat of an arc like Leon does but it, it all really feels like it's very rushed and not really it, it's really just not something that I really cared for too well. And one of the biggest issues I have to say is the the guy who they got to play Leon I thought did fine, but at the same time the writing for him really kind of made me really like irritated because knowing Leon Kennedy from the games, he's I remember him being at least in the second game, I remember him and even playing it that he was always a very go by the book kind of cop, especially working as a rookie. And in this one, they make him a complete inept like so incompetent to where He's really just like the typical, you know, rookie on the job, doesn't know anything, and it just really fell out. Of, it just really fell out of character from the games, and I really think that they really could have done a whole lot better with that and made him, you know, like, like, uh, you know, want a different direction where they went. Because in fact, 
there's a lot of points to where Leon hardly even does anything in the film, and when he has his big moment, it only happens a couple times, and it's not really, you know, it's not even really something I really got into. You know, they just make him kind of a joke throughout the film, and I, I, that really irritated me. And then the other one that I think that they could have really done more with was, um, was Jill Valentine. And I felt like, well, there is some things that I, I, I thought the actress did fine. I thought she did a good job with her. But at the same time, I felt like there wasn't a whole lot of screen time with her to where she really, you know, was kind of, was, was, was there, was, was just thrown in here and there and not really given much to do. Um, and the same thing kind of goes for Wesker. Now, the biggest thing I have with Wesker is I, I didn't really care for the guy that really played him too well. I thought that he kind of came across as a little too, like, bland. And he kind of reminded me, in a way, when I first saw him, I thought he looked like the guy that played off of, um, uh, The Expendables 3 in that movie, who played, like, the, the not I think it was the hacker equivalent in that one. He kind of looked like that, and he just, he didn't, I mean, and his performance just came across as very bland and very forgettable. And he really doesn't have the kind of, like, imposing kind of presence that you kind of expect to have uh you know Wesker to have in, in like the games and stuff because even from the games where I remember Wesker was always considered like the like the highest ranking that was trying to follow orders or anything and it was it feels like to me they could have gotten maybe like an older actor to maybe play the guy because it felt like he just didn't really have a very commanding presence to himself not to mention when they do something that 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 with his character later on in the film, it feels like it was just kind of thrown in there as an afterthought. Um, but I won't go into spoilers for it. But let's just say it's it's something that's from the games that's very prominent, and it just felt like it just really was an afterthought for the movie. Uh, and then some of the other biggest issues I have is other than the character development, a lot of the changes, a lot of the stuff that they really rush into, especially with the city. When the when Raccoon City gets overrun with zombies, it feels like it, that we're on a, a it, we're not seeing the large scale that we kind of wanted from the games. Now, I give them credit. Be, I, I understand this was very you know shot on a low budget and all, but it really felt like the stakes really weren't didn't build up high like I thought it would be as the movie went along. Because with it being a lot more smaller scale, it feels like there were easy situations that these characters can get out of, and a lot of the time, there's situations that happen where. Well, this is the problem with a lot of horror films do this, where they can't even hear the zombies that are coming to them. And it's like, you know, if you're hearing footsteps in scenes, you can. if you're a footsteps from a zombie f from any location, I'm pretty sure you can try to pick up on that, that they, would be, that they would be behind you. And so that was one of my other issues with character just making stupid choices and not really, you know, trying to, uh, you know, be aware of when zombies come around and everything. But one of the other biggest issues I will say is that the, the, the climax really felt rushed too with its anticlimactic um, big um, climax that takes place. And it feels like, you know, it was like a one and done and nothing really happened. You know, and it feels like we really didn't, I didn't really feel anything after it. Also, one of the other things I had an issue with is some of the CGI can look pretty bad at times. Now, like I said earlier, they did have some good practical effects that take place, but... Then there's other scenes where you see like very obvious like you know explosions or and you see how these other creatures that look in the film that look pretty off in areas and then there's other like um, set there's other action scenes that look pretty fake looking at times in the CGI and it really it didn't it really stuck out in a bad way um, but overall though I will say that while the movie didn't you know infuriate me like I was probably expecting it to and not really it didn't but it didn't really please me either. So with that being said, I will say that if they do more with this probably in the future, I would be at least interested in it. But for now, what we have is kind of a middle of the ground, middle of the road kind of movie for me. But I will say as a game adaptation, it does it better than the other films do. Well, at least the first movie. And uh, it's about the same level as Resident Evil Afterlife, or I'm sorry, Resident Evil Apocalypse kind of did with it trying to follow the games. But at the same time, I will say that I still kind of preferred one of this, one of the at least a couple of the other uh, Mila Jovovich Resident Evil films as an overall movie. So with that being said, I'm going to give the movie an average Joe on the film freaks meter. So for those of you who've also seen Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about it, and thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, and if you also played the games as well, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in my next review. I'll see you later.